Hello folks, this is Mark Smith with Family Tree Counseling Associates. And I, as you might guess, am on the campus of Notre Dame University. Behind me is the library, which has what is referred to as Touchdown Jesus. Right in front of me is the football stadium. And you many times will have the camera cut away from the football <laughs> it has Jesus still in this touchdown. I don't think that when the library was constructed that they meant it to have uh, touchdown implications, but that's sort of the, the legend of what it's become. Sorry you can't see me very well. I tried to find a nice shady spot, but I couldn't get a good view of touchdown Jesus. So uh, it's then, then it got sunny on me, and so here we are. So this is serendipity at work because the topic of the day today is holy ground and sacred places in your narcissistic abuse recovery. And here I am on a campus that for many people in the world is a sacred place with a picture of Jesus in the background. This video may not be for everybody. I'm a sentimental son of a gun. I find spiritual meaning in a lot of different things. I'm here in southern Michigan there's a retreat of sorts, a gathering of YouTube video makers on the subject of narcissistic abuse syndrome. I don't know who all's coming, but we're going to party and hang out. So we'll see how that goes. But that's why I'm up here and just happened to be near Nero Dame and I hadn't seen it before. so. I thought I'd come over and then I got inspired to speak about holy ground and sacred places. People, our work that we're doing to recover from narcissistic abuse, in, in my mind, it's a pilgrimage. It's not just, hey, I've got issues and I'm getting better. Um, it's it's bigger than that it's it's a fight between life and death for many of us it's sort of a fight between good and evil and I believe it's a spiritual journey I personally believe that this recovery process uh, it's really important to believe in a higher power and to pray and to lean into what you believe is deity and what you believe is um, your higher power, your spiritual guidance. This journey, I, I think it's it's sort of epic for many of us. It's It's the turning point of our lives. We can embrace the pain, learn from the pain, uh, heal from the pain and have it be a very disguised rich blessing ultimately in our lives and a victory last night I had a little bit of time on my hands because I'm here in self bend alone and I'm feeling such empowerment these days and thriving and victory I uh, I went to the tattoo parlor as I'm prone to do and I got my other arm worked on. I don't know if you can see that. Um, <laughs> twist my arm off. It's, uh, it's a tattoo of the Superman logo because with this journey, with everything that I've been through 
and all the battles and all the courage, I feel like Superman. When you go to hell and back and you come back with a smile on your face and a bounce in your step, you're Superman, you're Superwoman. This recovery process is producing a breed of people who are healed, who are whole, who are wise, who are happy, who are bulletproof, and we see kryptonite coming. So I don't mean to sound cocky, but if I get a touchdown, I'm going to spike the, the, the football in the end zone. And that's what that that's what this is. This spike in the football in the friggin' end zone. Cause I didn't know if I was gonna make it, but I not only made it, um, I'm killing it. <laughs> I I don't I don't know how. I don't know how. It's it's the grace of God and the community of fellow recovering people and a lot of hard work in recovery. So I'm going to share um, about this topic of sacred places and I want to encourage you to be sentimental and to, to build sacred places into the process of your recovery. At our practice at Family Tree in Carmel, Indiana, just north of Indianapolis, we have salt lamps and music and we never turn on the overhead lights, soft lighting and lots of art and uh, therapy dogs walking about. We want to create an environment that is just really beautiful and calm and peaceful. Just yesterday, I, or day before yesterday, I, I uh, met a couple for the first time and the first thing she said she says this is so inviting here and I hope if a lot of family tree counseling clients mention their sacred places that they would mention our office it's not real sacred for me it's just where I work um, but uh, we, we try to to create a spiritual environment so I thought of six places for me that were sacred places and I don't want to get lost in the detail the, the 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 important part of the video is if you find a safe place where you've done a lot of your healing build some ritual around it return and visit and celebrate it uh, spike the football in the end zone and do a little dance. Um, of course, one of my favorite places in the world and my safe place and my healing place is St. Joe, Michigan. I was having dinner with my friend Peg yesterday. Sorry for the airplane. And Peg asked me, hey, why do you like St. Joe so much? And I didn't really get to answer her but I thought about it and there's just so many answers. Um, it has a train that goes through twice a day. It has a beautiful beach uh, right on Lake Michigan. They have sculptors on every street corner. Every year there's a theme. Sometimes it's turtles, sometimes it's fish, sometimes it's cars. This year it's insects. And they have these amazing, adorable sculptures every year, and you see families taking pictures um, with their little kids. Uh, and I did that with my little kids many years ago. There's live music at the South Bend Chocolate Shop where you can get really good coffee. Um, there's this amazing hotel called the Boulevard that overlooks the bluff. The sunsets are stunning. They have this uh, waterfall that is, uh, it shoots up and it's made for kids to play in. It's just, it's such a magical artistic place. And 
I'm not giving a commercial for St. Joe. What I'm saying is the main reason that it's sacred to me is when I was at my most broken, I had a place to go to every day. I'm going to go there today. And it was a, a spa. And you, you put on a robe and you uh, put on these socks and you get uh, your feet massaged by this little machine and you drink uh, yummy tea. And uh, then you get a bunch of spa services. And when you're going through narcissistic abuse, the trauma is in the tissues of your body. So anything that you can do to um, uh, address and reduce tension in the tissues of your body is very magical and very healing. Um, the sun's down a little bit, so maybe I'll take these off for a second. Um, they have a really good gym at uh, St. Joe, and I, um, I get up in the morning when I'm in St. Joe and I go get a good workout. Um, at St. Joe, my, my EMDR therapist is in this old building that um, uh, just has all the charm in the world just because it's so ancient and sort of ill-maintained and uh, it just it just has character and I cried so many tears there and I experienced the the magical power the healing power of EMDR I was meeting with a client this week who, who only has had one EMDR session and she already has seen a drastic reduction in the number of um, panic attacks that she's having every day after one EMDR session. So when I walk around St. Joe, I wasn't always able to get in my car and go to South Haven and see my therapist, Paul Hartman, but I had many phone sessions with Paul and I remember oh, this is where I had my phone session that day, and this is what I talked about. And it, it just it reminds me of how far I've come, and it reminds me of who, how I'm different. Um, I was able to see my healing massage therapist yesterday, Deb Ward, and she just remarked at, at how different I was, how how healed I seemed and and how um, uh, I wasn't as sh I'm not as shattered as what I once was this is all rolled up in the magical uh, little town of st. Joe Michigan and when I when I when I get out of the car and I start walking around I feel magic and you guys can have places like this all over the world but have have multiple places where you can go and retreat and rest and do your work and and heal of course the second most sacred place for me is a place called on-site which is a treatment facility near Nashville Tennessee and I've talked a lot about it and you guys are probably getting tired of me talking about on-site, but it's such a special place where normal people who've experienced wounding and trauma can go and work together and heal. The most sacred place for me is they have this labyrinth that they've built, and every day after a run and after sit-ups, in the heat, I would take my shirt off and I would walk around the labyrinth and pray. And I was, I was clinging to life. I was so shattered. But there also was a fierceness to my determination. If you're going to heal from your narcissistic abuse, you have to be tenacious, you have to be fierce. Early on in the process, I won't show you, but I had the word beast tattooed on my chest because my ferocity and my commitment to the process was beastly. And now that 
I've uh, really healed the majority of my stuff. I I honestly, like I said, I, I feel I feel a little Supermanish. So, on site, I have so many wonderful memories. I shared a story about one uh, what we thought was ruined um, July Fourth holiday, where the um, the fireworks were canceled and it was just torrentially raining rain like you can't even believe was coming down and me and uh, three other uh, inmates uh, we, we uh, flew threw open the doors and somebody had some uh, one of the staff had some music on their their iPhone and we just danced we, we were drenched it was torrential rain, and I was dancing with this middle-aged fellow who danced like uh, uh, Snoopy. And it remains one of the most treasured and fun moments of my life. You can't you can't plan for so, such moments; they just they just happen to you, and they are they are sacred. South South Haven, Michigan is a sacred place for me because that's where Paul Hartman's office was and he had this really awesome office in a retro building with lots of wood and right on the river and during breaks I'd grab my basketball and run and dribble the ball up and down the side of the river and lunchtime was uh, seafood enchiladas at this uh, place very near his office on the river and I remember the second time I went and visited Paul, I made a video about being a warrior in recovery, uh, much like uh, what I've been talking about today. And there was this fierce thunderstorm and I would say something and then uh, there'd be thunder and lightning just crackling in the background as if God were saying, amen. It's one of the, you can't hardly hear me, but it's one of the favorite videos that I've made. Another one of my sacred places is I have a therapist in the Indianapolis area, Rick Gustafson, and he practices downtown. I haven't seen him for a while. And his house is painted yellow, and he's on the same street as Jane Wickham Riley's uh, old house where people take tours and Rick's office is in the back above a garage and he has two comfortable chairs and he offers you a coke or some water and I think just about every woman I've ever dated has been up there with me in his those chairs including the narcissist um, that that was recently so damaging to me uh, the thing that made Rick's space so sacred um, was when I would arrive he would give me this uh, really affirming long hug and then when I would leave he would give me an affirming long hug and he'd always tell me just wow look at how good you're doing look at how awesome the work is that you're doing I'm so proud of you that was so affirming Another place that was a sacred place for me early on in the process of the shattering and the healing was my church, Northview Christian Church. The very first time I revisited this church was with this borderline and her false self, her con game self, was uh, clinging to the belief that, that she was a spiritual person and somebody who wanted to be a Christian and do the right thing and make amends. So we went to this church together and the subject that day was lust and I had to get out of there. I couldn't really sit in the seats because I was claustrophobic and I got up and I walked about 10 feet and an arm reached out and grabbed me and it was a, uh, a client of mine, a couple and they said, hey, how you doing? 
and I was crying and they were they were like what's going on and this this was eight days after this woman began began her onslaught her eight-day onslaught of demolition of my soul and so I had actually been working with them on similar issues so I told them and they both gave me a hug and then I walked to the back of the church and um, another couple came up to me that I had worked with who had been in our group therapy program. They actually met in our group and I told them and uh, they gave me a hug and then as I was standing there with these old friends, these supporters, these people that I had brought a lot of help to, another couple came along and then at the end there I was able to go up and talk with the pastor and get my tears wiped off and um, get some support and for many weeks I would go every week that I was in town and I would I couldn't I couldn't sit in the seats I would pace back and forth during the whole uh, the whole service because I had so much agitation in my system and nobody ever questioned that. Nobody ever tried to control that. Um, some of the ushers would bring me tissues. Uh, I'll never forget the support I got. Um, I used to have a writing studio at a, pl a place uh, called uh, the Indianapolis uh, Art Center in the back. They have this art studio building, old building, and I had a beautiful writing studio right next to the writer Center. And the walls mar were maroon, and I had a maroon leather couch in there, and it was just the coolest place. But money got tight, and I didn't get there very much, and it was... 45 minutes away so I basically moved that room to my home I painted the walls maroon I moved the same furniture into it so I call it world headquarters for my my writing and video efforts in reaching the world and but it's it's a writing studio and it's where I go when I am uh, doing meditation so when I would was doing those meditations uh, that I learned from uh, Camille Ravikant uh, in his book love yourself as if your life depended on it I would hold my little inner child little stuffed tiger up to my neck and for for seven minutes I'd say I love myself as I breathed in and as I breathed out I just shared whatever came up for me. And when I walk into the writing studio, there's a sacred feel to it. It's holy ground. Um, all these places are holy ground and sacred places. The last one is Myrtle Beach. I've gone there so many times. I haven't been there lately. The last time I was there was with the borderline narcissists and it was all a sham and I soon found out what a sham it was and I haven't been back but I, I will I'll be back but the thing I like is walking on the beach uh, with my feet in the water and praying I can I can walk and walk and walk and walk and and I love the feel of the water up to my knees and I love just pouring my heart out to God and saying what do you want me to do next or when I was at my lowest last November and near Thanksgiving I was considering quitting as a therapist and moving to Myrtle Beach because I was just so broken and just so um, non-functional and the week after and that week of prayer and walking in the water and getting some therapy uh, was the beginning of the light at the end of the tunnel.
the week after that, my doctor put me on a very effective medication that helped me immediately. And then the week after that, I discovered the book Psychopath Free, which completely gave me all the answers I was looking for. Three weeks later, I made a video called The 50 Symptoms of Narcissistic Abuse Syndrome, which is right at about now 89,000 views. But it started with a week clinging to life, clinging to hope. Uh, a friend of mine uh, drove me there and back, and I, you know, they put a bed in the back of their vehicle, and I was so exhausted and destroyed and wounded. Um, I needed to lay down and sleep and rest. So 13 hours there, 13 hours back. Um, so th these are just some of my sacred places. Uh, my sacred place isn't uh, near Touchdown Jesus on the campus of Notre Dame University. But any place out in nature that speaks to you might be your sacred place or your church or your therapist's office or your backyard or a treatment center that's magical and effective. But I just wanted to say this. I'm so grateful. Um, those of you who are new to recovery and you're clinging to life and you're doubting that you're going to get better, uh, someday you're going to be Superman and Superwoman. Someday you're going to spike the football in the end zone. Someday you're going to dance like Snoopy. Someday you're going to have a big smile on your face like, like I do right now because you're going to do the work. And part of doing the work is leaning into special people and walking on holy ground and establishing sacred places in your pil pilgrimage, in your spiritual journey to healthiness and wholeness and freedom. I love you guys. Keep watching these videos and keep putting one foot in front of another. Uh, find some time this week to go spend an hour in your sacred place and meditate and pray and listen to a good book on narcissistic abuse recovery and do some journaling. That's how people get better. If you haven't joined our YouTube channel, last week I accidentally said we were at 4,000. We're at almost at 14,000 as it turned out. Also, there are some very good books on shame and on abandonment issues at our website, FamilyTreeCounseling.com. Have a magical, spiritual, heartfelt day, my fellow Superman and Superwomen. God bless.